most Americans are not aware of this growing U.S. military presence in Africa. On Wednesday, 26th of July, 2023, the Presidential Guard of Niger placed the President Mohamed Bazoum on the house arrest and the military took over power. The President says members of the Presidential Guard are holding him inside the palace. You see, taking power is very simple. Chaos is spreading in Western Africa after Niger was taken over by a military government last week. But holding on to power is a total different kettle of fish. We warn that any military intervention against Niger will be considered as a declaration of war against Burkina Faso and Mali. The ECOWAS country is threatening to intervene militarily with the use of force. In the event the authorities' demands are not met within one week, take all measures necessary to restore constitutional order in the Republic of Niger. Such measures may include the use of force. This should concern you if you live in Nigeria. Very soon, you're going to have a humanitarian crisis. And you're going to have influx of refugees into your country. Plus, there's right now instability in the Sahel region. The conflict that is more widely known from the Sahel is the Boko Haram insurgency in the Lake Chad Basin. We're going to have more of that if this doesn't really go well. So we are witnessing that the whole belt south of the Sahara is becoming an extremely problematic area. Let's observe the uniqueness of this situation. First, the coup is not about the people against its own government alone. It's about the people against colonial influence. Aujourd'hui, à ce petit Macron de la France, que le Niger nous appartient. C'est à nous de faire ce que nous voulons de Niger, ce que nous voulons. Nous traitons avec qui nous voulons et comme nous voulons. Of course, you're right. It is a sovereign nation. But but we, why, why does France and United States have military bases in Niger? Over a thousand U.S. service personnel are in Niger, um, but lots of other countries are also there. France, Germany, Italy, Belgium. The U.S. is right there. Conducting these, you know, real operations. Facts on the ground has it that the people believe that these countries have their troops here because of the mineral resources they export from this country. We have uranium, we have diamonds, we have gold and oil, and we live like slaves. Why should we? We can't accept it. The French must leave. We don't need them to keep us safe. It will surprise you to know that Niger is one of the poorest countries in the world and one of the biggest producers of uranium. <laughs> this is crazy. Uranium is used to power nuclear plants in Europe. Many of the uranium that comes out from Niger goes to Europe and 15% goes to France. French nuclear reactors at work, producing more than two-thirds of the country's electricity. They need a steady supply of uranium to keep making all that power. Niger provides a fifth of the European Union's uranium imports. Now you see why this region is very important. Cities are powered by uranium. I mean, the French has done it. So why can't Niger be powered by uranium? It will also shock you to know that Niger collects 70% of electricity from Nigeria. This is very crazy, right? You have resources, but you can't use them. So the people have had enough about this and they decided to protest in support of the coup plotters. But something else also happened. The people are waving this flag. Seen waving throughout the capital were Russian flags. One was even put atop the French embassy, which had to be evacuated after it was attacked. Could this be, you know, one of the successful factors of Russian propaganda? You never can tell where the direction of a war is going to go, right? You just, you just have all the clues, you have all the facts and the figures, but you just can't tell who is involved and who is playing what role. But here's the role that Russia is playing. Russia has influencers. Take a look at this guy. He works with Russia to influence, to speak about the Russian agenda. Putin veut récupérer son pays. And it's not just him. Yeah, this woman as well. Her name is Nata Leon. I mean, she calls herself the Lady of Sochi. She attend most of all these summits and, you know, so try to sell the Russian agenda to the black community. The US government and the open source project All Eyes on Wagner concluded that Moscow is paying a number of local influencers to spread propaganda across the African continent. Russia has portrayed itself to be one of the best friends of Africa because right from colonial days, they were the ones who funded the South African soldiers to fight against their colonial masters. 
according to data some of these african countries seem to be in close ties with the west things are beginning to get dicey so now with the leaders of this junta um, announcing that they're no longer producing and exporting uranium to france and also have asked france to evacuate niger the west and france could sit and fold their hands why they use ECOWAS to fight the war against Burkina Faso, Mali and Niger who have chosen to strengthen ties with Russia. Our team has been deeply engaged with uh, multiple countries in the region as well as critical organizations like ECOWAS, like the African Union uh, and we are united in condemning the actions that have taken place in Niger. Will it be wise to go full on military intervention on Niger? Do you think that some countries are using the ECOWAS to wage war against their own African country? So what's the best way forward here? Let me know what you think about this and um, you know, thanks for watching today's video and until next time, bye for now. We do not understand how Africa, with so much wealth on our soil, with generous nature, water, sunshine and abundance, how Africa is today the poorest continent. Africa is a hungry continent. And how come there are heads of state all over the world begging? These are the questions we are asking ourselves, and we have no answers so far.